Right now, investigators are trying to figure out why a Boeing 737 crashed in China with over 130 passengers on board. And confirmation hearings begin today for Judge Katanjay Brown Jackson, how she could make Supreme Court history if confirmed. You're watching News 3 Now at noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Kane. Despite several days of ceasefire talks, Russia's deadly invasion of Ukraine is now in its fourth week and shows no signs of letting up. President Biden is preparing to take a trip overseas to discuss tr strategy with NATO partners as Ukraine struggles to defend its nation. Skylar Henry has the latest. Ukraine is determined to defend the hard-hit city of Mariupol. Leaders there rejected Russia's offer to allow civilians to escape if Ukraine would surrender the port city. But time may be running out for thousands stranded in basements. We have been here for 11 days, she says. We have some food and some firewood, but in a week we'll have nothing. What should we do? Mariupol would be a significant victory for Vladimir Putin allowing Russian forces stationed across southern Ukraine to connect with soldiers in the east. His campaign is stalled. He's not been able to achieve the goals as rapidly that he wants to achieve as rapidly as he wants to achieve them. Russian missiles are also pounding targets in Kyiv. At least eight people were killed in an attack on a shopping mall. The latest violence, which appears to be targeting civilians. President Biden had a call today with European leaders about the ongoing crisis, and he travels to Belgium this week to meet face-to-face -face with American allies. On the agenda, possible additional sanctions against Russia, more humanitarian assistance for refugees, and military aid for NATO troops near the Ukrainian border. The United Nations estimates the war has uprooted about 10 million Ukrainians. For civilians left behind, the violence is overwhelming. There are now so many bodies, volunteers are burying them wherever they can, including by the side of some roads. More than 900 civilians have been killed in the fighting, and that number is rising every day. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. Well, right now, officials are investigating after a Boeing 737 crashed in southern China. 132 people were on board, and officials believe there are no survivors. Investigators say the plane lost contact with emergency services before suddenly descending and crashing into a mountain. Smoke and flames were seen coming from the crash site. It's unclear what caused the plane to crash. Let's head to the Weather Center now. Julian Seawright has a look at your certified most accurate forecast. The first full day of spring is living up to it. That's right, it is. With beautiful, gorgeous skies for us as of right now. Even though we are still looking at some cloud cover, the sun is really starting to peek through, giving us a bit of blue as we start off our afternoon. Now, as we take a look at what we're going to be seeing, looking ahead, as of right now, it's already 62 degrees. We're going to see those 60s really dominate much of our afternoon and knocking on the door of 70 degrees as we get into the later part, close to the evening hours around 5 p.m. But as we see, temperatures around southern Wisconsin, it's around 64 degrees in Janesville, 66 in Platteville. So you can see this more south you are, are, the warmer you are as of right now. So southerly winds continue to funnel warm air into the area. Now, as we take a look at wind speeds, we are on the breezier side. 14 miles per hour winds into Janesville, just still in the single digits, but in the upper single digits here in Madison with 10 miles per hour winds over into Platteville. Now, we still are seeing some pocket showers just a bit north of the Dells, but for the most part, we're staying on the dry side, and that's going to be the theme for us throughout today. But we are going to be seeing some changes coming into tonight. But until then, enjoy the weather while we have it. It's because we are going to cool down, and on top of it, we're going to be tracking some showers that are going to stick around for quite a while, Mark. But we'll get into detail with that in just a few moments. All right, we'll check back. Thanks, Julian. Yeah. Dane County Sheriff's officials are investigating what caused a deadly crash near Edgerton. The crash happened on the 500 block of Albion Road just before 9.30 last night. Officials say a driver lost control of their car and then hit a building. Both the driver and a passenger were ejected and pronounced dead at the scene. Deputies say alcohol and speed appear to be factors in the crash. Another deadly crash last night. It happened on County Highway C in the township of Chester around 6.30. Dodge County Sheriff's officials say a man veered off the road while approaching a curve before hitting a tree. The 87-year-old died at the scene. The crash remains under investigation.
Four days of confirmation hearings begin today for Supreme Court nominee Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. If confirmed, Judge Jackson would become the first black woman to sit on the nation's highest court. All 22 members of the Senate Judiciary Committee will deliver opening remarks before Judge Jackson introduces herself. Judge Jackson currently sits on the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. She's also been a district judge, public defender, and served on the U.S. Sentencing Commission. So far, no Republicans have committed to supporting her nomination, but all eyes are on the three GOP senators who voted to confirm Judge Jackson to the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals last year. Her credentials and the breadth of her experience are impressive. I will, of course, await the hearings before the Judiciary Committee before making a decision. If the Democrats vote together, they can confirm Judge Jackson without any Republican support. Vaccine advisors to the FDA are set to meet next month to discuss the possible need for COVID-19 vaccine booster shots down the road. They'll look at the potential process for selecting variant-specific boosters and whether the vaccine could become an annual shot similar to flu shots. No official vote is planned and there will be no discussion of any specific products applying for authorization or approval. There's more to come on News 3 Now at Noon. Boeing grapples with a downed aircraft overseas and brackets busted. How about a March Madness for months instead? I'm Diane King Hall at the CBS Broadcast Center. I'll have those stories and more in your CBS Money Watch report. You're watching News 3 Now at Noon. It's Make My Mondays at hy V. Get sirloin fillets for just $1.99 each. That's right. Get 5-ounce hy V Choice Reserve bacon-wrapped sirloin fillets for just $1.99 each. Monday only. Scan the QR code or check out hy for more deals. Andrew Larson here, owner of Larson Home Services. My team is fired up. We've discovered a new replacement gutter system that sets the standard for performance, durability, and beauty. It's called Gutter Shutter, and it's guaranteed to never clog, sag, or pull away. Gutter Shutter is the world's strongest high-performance gutter with thicker aluminum, wider gutter size, and it's available in 18 beautiful colors. Best of all, it's made 100% in the USA. Over the years, my team at Larson Home Services has installed thousands of gutter systems and premium roofs in our community. And what really sets us apart is the experience you'll have. You'll be like a member of our team throughout the entire process and we'll always follow up to make sure your experience with us was as promised. That's the Larson experience. We can't wait to show you what Gutter Shutter can do for your home. Right now, get 75% off installation labor, free financing for 24 months, and a $100 Visa gift card with your new Gutter Shutter system. Call now to set up your free estimate. McGann Furniture in downtown Baraboo should probably be called McGann Furniture and Flooring because we're the area's oldest and most experienced floor covering store. Our friendly staff will explain the many types of flooring available, answer questions, and make suggestions so you can choose what's best for your home and lifestyle. We always offer free in-home measurements and estimates and use the finest installers in the entire area. And remember, at McGann's, we don't inflate prices only to mark them down for a sale. Stop in today and discover the difference. You'll be glad you did. McGann Furniture, downtown Baraboo. Do you suffer from erectile dysfunction? Peak Performance for Men uses an advanced form of acoustic wave therapy, restoring normal and natural functionality where it counts most. Call now and receive an ultrasound. Your initial consultation, all for free. Call Peak Performance for Men today. Tony Evers, all of us. They talk, schools close down. Police are attacked, belittled. Critical race theory flourishes. They talk, one person does something. Kevin Nicholson has organized thousands of Wisconsinites to support our police, get kids back in school, and stop crazy teaching. You want talk? Talk. Or something done? The doer is no nonsense. Kevin Nicholson is governor. It's Make My Mondays at Hy-V. Get sirloin fillets for just $1.99 each. That's right. Get 5-ounce hy V Choice Reserve bacon-wrapped sirloin fillets for just $1.99 each. Monday only. Scan the QR code or check out hy for more deals. Shares of Boeing are under pressure today following news that one of its 737 jets crashed in China. 
with 132 people on board. This 737 was not part of the troubled MAX fleet, which recently came back into service after being grounded for nearly two years following two fatal crashes. More Americans are choosing to freelance instead of maintaining the traditional 9 to 5 job. According to Upwork, 59 million Americans freelanced last year. A growing number of people with specialized skills are opting for contract work. 51% of people with grad degrees chose to freelance last year and more than half of programmers did the same. Booking sites are indicating a travel boom ahead. Kayak and Hopper are among the sites seeing a rise in volume for spring and summer travel. It comes as COVID restrictions ease across the country. Air DNA data shows that bookings for travel in the northern hemisphere are up nearly 50% from a year ago. And Bush Beer has launched its own version of March Madness in the form of a bark bracket. The company is looking for a new furry face of the franchise. To participate, pet owners can share a photo of their pooch on social media using the hashtags Bush Bark Bracket and Contest by tomorrow. The final fur will be announced on Wednesday. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Diane King Hall. All right, let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials down 230 points. The Nasdaq off 65. The S&P 500 managing a gain of about three and a half points. Next at noon, we'll share your latest ag numbers. Plus, we're officially reaching spring. But after today, April showers come early and could last all week. Julian has the latest forecast after the break. A million dollars worth of the best hot tubs in Madison are at Leisure Concepts. And right now, get immediate free delivery, free ozone system, cover lift, matching entry steps, supplies, and training. Our showroom is packed with brand new hot tubs for immediate delivery. We're including everything you need and all at a great low spring price. Leisure Concepts is open seven days a week. Stop into our packed showroom in Madison on the Beltline at the Park Street exit. What do you think? I love it. Dairy farms disappearing, prices up, COVID still not gone. And what's Ron Johnson done? Voted against new jobs and told us to take mouthwash to cure COVID. I'm Sarah Godlewski. I grew up in Eau Claire where we're more interested in common sense than conspiracies. That's how I've run the state treasurer's office and common sense is what, quite frankly, we could use in Washington. Practical ideas that just help people, not mouthwash. I'm Sarah Godlewski, and that's why I approve this message. Find out what your case may really be worth. It may be a lot more than you think. Cupie and Abraham. I got almost a million dollars. 350000 I got paid fast. A whole lot more than the insurance company offered. If you're injured, call now. It's free and confidential. And there's never a fee unless you win. Tell them you mean business. Call 800-800-5678. Hupe and Abraham. Right now. Tomorrow morning, plants for a good price while helping the environment. So win-win, how you can take advantage of the deal before it's too late. And our next weather maker will make for a soggy morning. We'll tell you what you'll need to know from 437 tomorrow morning. Wisconsin Chamber Orchestra's Masterwork Series continues at the Capitol Theater March 25th with a world premiere performance of Christopher Blake's Kotuku and Paganini's Tour de Force Violin Concerto No. 1 featuring Eric Silberger. Tickets at Overture.org. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. And Pam Yankee from the Midwest Farm Report is on her Hawaiian farm tour. Lucky her. You can follow along with her on her fabulous Farm Babe Facebook page. In the meantime, here are your farm numbers.
let's head over to the weather center. Julian is here. There he comes <laughs> with the forecast. Going to get wet out there. It will get wet, but until then, definitely enjoy the sunshine while we have it. We're looking at a nice warm start to our afternoon as temperatures are already into the 60s throughout much of southern Wisconsin for us. Thanks to those southerly winds bringing in that warmth for us, we're going to be seeing plenty of that warmth throughout the rest of today until we get into tonight where we're going to see that transition for us. But as you can see, right now, 62 degrees in Madison with 64 in Janesville and 66 degrees in Platteville. As you can see, there's quite a little bit of a divide here where we're seeing the 60s and the 50s between central and southern Wisconsin. That's because that warm front, as you can see, that flow of the southerly winds are bringing in the warmer air to areas just mainly to the southwest first, but then it will reach eventually into the central areas. But we are looking at some pop-up showers thanks to all that moisture from that warm front that is rolling in, but that's mainly for northern and central Wisconsin because we're still onto the dry side for us. And planning out the rest of today, just know we're going to see clouds go back and forth with sunshine really trying to peek its way through as we get into the rest of our evening hours. But cloudy conditions will return as we go into tonight as we are going to start to see that cold front coming behind it, which will be bringing in our rain. And that's where our next weather maker is going to be doing. It's coming across the Great Plains as of right now, bringing in plenty of rain and even snow to areas just into the south of the Midwest and is going to continue to push its way into the upper Midwest, which will be bringing in our chances of some rain that's going to stick around for the next few days. Days. But this is what we're going to see as we're timing things out for us. This evening is going to be fine. We're going to be seeing a little bit of breezy conditions, but temperatures are going to be warm, and we are going to see a bit of sunshine around the 5 p.m. commute. As we transition overnight, if you're wondering when the rain's going to start, well, it's going to be overnight hours very early into our Tuesday morning. As we get into around Tuesday at 7 a.m., we're going to see some isolated occasional showers, and then those will pick back up as we get into the later part of our Tuesday afternoon, where we could be seeing even into around 5 p.m., a really wet evening commute for us. So make sure that you have your rain gear nearby and are ready for some wet conditions because we are going to be seeing in terms of how much rain over the next 48 hours could be seeing anywhere between an inch, an inch and a half, or even some two inches of rain for some areas in southern Wisconsin. So we're going to get quite a significant amount of rainfall for us here in southern Wisconsin. And that's just the start of it because once we get into the back end of this week, well, any rain that we're going to see will turn itself into snow for Thursday, but it's just going to be minor accumulations. Not looking at much in terms of it, and then we go into our Friday, transitioning into early overnight hours of Saturday. Well, we're looking for another round of some rain mixing in with some snowfall again here into southern Wisconsin. But then we're going to be drying out. So once we're done with all that activity over the next four days or so, we're going to be pretty quiet heading into the back end of the weekend around Sunday. But the three things we're going to need to know, we're going to be looking at almost 70. And some areas will even see 70. It's going to be very active for the next few days, but then we're looking at cool conditions for us. The temperature is going to be into the 40s and upper 30s until we get into the following week where we're going to be seeing a couple of 50 degree temperatures, but still spring showers are going to stick around, Mark. We're definitely getting spring, but uh, just today's the spring like temperature but the spring-like conditions, at least we're seeing some rain. <laughs> and we need rain, that's for yes, sure. Yes, we do. All right, Julian, thank you. Howard has cooked up something in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen to get you through the rest of March Madness. It's March Madness, which means we're going to need a few fun foods to serve while we're rooting for our favorite teams. And rather than serving the same predictable stuff over and over again, we have a new idea that we know will be a slam dunk. We begin by warming some store-bought refrigerated garlic mashed potatoes just to the point that they're soft. To those, we add a bit of shredded cheddar cheese and some sliced scallions, and we give that a good mix. Now for the fun part. We lay out a dozen egg roll skins and place a couple of spoonfuls of mashed potatoes in the center of each one. On top of that, we add a little more cheddar cheese and some bacon bits. Then, all we have to do is brush the edges with some beaten egg before folding the flap that's closest to you over the potato mixture, then fold in the sides and roll it up like this. Once they're done, we'll fry them until they're golden and we'll drain them on some paper towels. What you end up with is an all-American twist on an egg roll that tastes like a loaded baked potato wrapped up in a crispy, crunchy crust. I hope you'll go online and get the recipe for our loaded potato roll-ups, so you can add these to your game day or any day lineup. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a winning way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. 
Up next, Linda Barch from the Bruce Company is here answering your plant and garden questions. The number to call 608-270-9933. We'll get to your calls right after this. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. From working out to catching up, and of course, game night. Your home is the groundwork for all of life's awesome moments. This is Tom Coyle. My family and I say thank you. We're proud to have been a part of this community for 77 years. And during our 77th anniversary event, carpet installation is just $77. Coyle Carpet One Floor and Home. Beautiful, made affordable. Locally owned and operated since 1945. Update your home with a fresh paint color from Menards. Paramount is a super premium paint and primer in one that offers the most advanced protection in one coat. Pick up a gallon of interior flat paint for just $29.98 after 11% rebate. Add to your update with new Shaw flooring. From soft and luxurious carpet to durable laminate flooring and waterproof vinyl plank. Save today and get 11% off all Shaw flooring. Save big money at Menards. I never would have thought that Ron Johnson would have ever been somebody that I can say is family. I remember thinking, wow, he actually came here. But he actually took the time to step in the door and support my husband in a program, in a vision, in a dream. It was like their visions of helping the people were all one glue. And when the two of them got together, they developed a program called the Joseph Project. I'm Ron Johnson, and I approve this message. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family cool this summer, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. In Madison, contact Heating and Cooling Incorporated to maximize your comfort and energy savings, whatever the season. This is Connie Ryan of Ryan Funeral Homes. While things have changed, it's still necessary for families to stay connected. And when it comes to the loss of a loved one, it's important to process and grieve and honor your loved one in a way that keeps everyone safe. We're doing this through intimate services and private virtual streaming so your family can be part of the service no matter where they are. Ryan Funeral Homes are here with your safety in mind and compassion and care in your time of need. You're taking your calls at 608-270-9933. Good to see you in studio. And Spring. As usual, you bring a bunch of plants along? What I brought you, along some pretty things, yes. What do you have? Well, there are, um, uh, my theme basically was the fact that you can have these variegated plants that are easy to grow. This whole pathos group is very simple. This one has bugs or something. <laughs> very funny. <laughs> that That is very, I took a lot of time to cut those pieces out. <laughs> no, this is a type of philodendron and very, very easy to grow, but obviously a different variety that just has something a little distinctive. What the heck is this? If you're having a hard time finding this, this this is the shingle plant, and but don't be shocked at the price. This is a rather expensive little item. This is growing up the wood. It uh, is attached to the wood. The stem is very tight against it, and that's why it's called shingle plant. Nice variegation. Seventy dollars. <laughs> Easy to grow. <laughs> if it keeps growing, you got to. It does get. Wood? It does grow slowly, but right. it will get well, eventually three feet tall. Wow, interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to the phones. We'll start with Kay from Madison. Hi, Kay. What's your question? Hi. Um. Thanks for taking the call. I left my hydrangea blooms on the plant for winter interest. Now I need to know when do I cut those, you know, dried off blooms off and how far back so that I don't mess up the bloom for this year. Okay, do you know what kind of hydrangea you have by any chance? Woof. <laughs> okay, that's all right. Are they cone flowers, cone shaped? Uh, kind of. Mm, it's yeah, okay. they're they're more round. More rounded. Okay, yeah. see, there are some plants like Annabelle hydrangea. That group of plants you can cut back drastically, and it will regrow and flower for you. This is the time to prune those flowers off. Any hydrangeas, but depending upon what kind it is, 
that determines how far you cut it back. Because if it's if it's a PG or a panicle, that, that variety, that um, species of, of hydrangea, then you only prune them back about six, eight inches. Okay, so find out what kind it is. It would be best to be careful. All right, Mary, Mary Ann from Barneveld. Go ahead, what's your question? Mine is the very same question <laughs> she had about the hydrangea. Mine was a pink one. Does that make a difference? That does help, yes, because those th you don't you can prune them back further. But I would suggest waiting till you see where new growth occurs. Just cu cut off the flowers at this point. Okay, really? mm -hmm. you don't cut it back. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, You're thanks welcome. for calling. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we have uh, Margie here. Go ahead, Margie. Hi, I'm calling to ask about some uh, tulips that I was gifted. They were grown in a glass container, uh -huh. and they were just gorgeous. But they're done blooming now, and I want to know what I should do with the bulbs. Were they I in, plant them? Yeah, were they in me? soil? Were they in soil or in water? In water. In water. Generally, those are difficult for them to, to do very well. Once you you could try planting them in the ground um, when it when it gets a little bit warmer, because those leaves would would still freeze off because they've been inside. But usually, if they're in water, they they have a hard time getting up to a, a point where they're going to develop flowers next year. Can't hurt. Put them in the ground. See what happens okay, next year. Okay, so I would I would plume, plume, uh, plant them now or in the fall. You would wait until it's warm enough outside to plant them, and okay. then the leaves need, need to regenerate and build up that bulb again. Got it. Thanks so right. much. Thank you. Let's go to Kay in Verona. Hi, Kay. What's your question? Yes, I, I had a hibiscus outside last year in a pot. I brought it in. I know it was supposed to go dormant. It didn't. It keeps on growing, and it's blossoming, but I have scale on it, scales on it. Yes. Uh, what's the best way to handle those? Well, if if there's just a few of them, you can actually remove them and and use a little cotton swab swab with um, alcohol to kill the eggs. But if they're numerous, uh, you would have to do some sort of systemic. So we go go come to the garden center or whatever wherever you um, like to you get your chemicals and do a, use a systemic against it because that's a difficult insect to get rid of indoors. Okay, quickly, Nancy from DeForest, what's your question? I have bulbs that I have been, when I was in the hospital, they gave me flowers, mm -hmm. and so um, I have many hi uh, hydrangea bulbs and tulip bulbs, and I wanted to know when to plant them. Okay. The hydrangea most likely is not one that's going to survive in Wisconsin. It's probably was grown in a greenhouse, so I, I don't feel confident for, to tell you to plant that. The other bulbs, you can try planting them and see if they will regenerate, but after after the past past frost, yeah. May fifteenth. Yeah, yeah, Mother's Day usually yes. around that time. That's why. All right, we are out of time. Thank you. Great to see you again. Good to see you, Mark. Get, get this fixed. <laughs> See you next time. Right. Here's Julian, one final check of the forecast. And we're going to close things out with the three things we're going to need to know. Just know that for the forecast, we are going to still see the fairly warm temperatures for us today, but it's going to be pretty soggy for the next few days. So definitely bring out the rain gear, rain boots, and the slicker, and of course, the good old reliable umbrella for us. Then afterwards, we are going to be seeing some cooler conditions after the rain, but once again, just prepare because in the next 24 hours, we're going to be seeing all and off showers that will be lasting all through Tuesday, and we'll be talking about rain pretty much in throughout the rest of the week. Aside from that, though, temperatures are going to be on the cooler side. So we won't have the full spring like feel just yet, but we will see spring like showers that will stick around for us. And once again, folks, we definitely need it. So this is actually welcomed for us to see you on our first week of spring. Over to you, Mark. All this stays liquid. We're happy. Yeah, with absolutely. That. All right, Julian, thank you. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you back here at four o'clock in the meantime. Have a great afternoon.